Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top seven reasons why your electric dryer is taking too long to dry. Stick around till the end of the video for an important dryer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. The most common reason for an electric dryer taking too long to dry is a restricted airflow. This is usually caused by the exhaust being kinked or clogged or dirty lint screen. Make sure to clean your exhaust and make sure the outside vent hood is working properly. Also make sure that the lint screen isn't damaged, rusted, or clogged up with lint. It needs to be cleaned after every load to ensure proper airflow. Next we need to check the blower wheel. The blower wheel circulates the warm air through the dryer and then out the exhaust. Depending upon the design, it can be located either behind the front panel or behind the rear panel inside the blower housing. Make sure the blower wheel isn't clogged with lint or damaged. You want to make sure that the blower wheel isn't stripped and is still attached to the motor shaft. So spin the blower, which should make the motor turn, as well as the drum. If it doesn't, then you have to replace it. If you need to order a part, simply go to AppliancePartsPros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we can check the heating element. The heating element heats the air before it goes into the dryer drum. The heating element is made up of a coiled wire inside a metal heater box. This is a single coil element, but there are a lot of them out there that have dual coils. To make sure the part can carry an electric current, we need to test it with a multimeter for continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. This is a single coil style. To check it, remove anything from the terminals. Then touch a probe to each terminal. If there's no continuity, it needs to be replaced. To check a dual coil element, you need to remove the wires. and then check each coil separately. To do that, we need to put a probe on the terminal that has two coil wires going into the back of it. And then we need to touch the other probe to each of the other terminals. They should both have continuity. If either one doesn't, you'll need to replace it. Next, we'll check the thermistor. The thermistor is a sensor that tells the dryer the temperature inside the drum. They're usually found in newer dryers that have a control board. They're designed so that the resistance decreases as the temperature increases, allowing the control board to regulate the temperature by turning the heat on and off. The thermistor is usually located on the blower housing. To test it, you'll have to find the tech sheet and see if there's a diagnostic mode on your dryer that you can test it in. If not, you'll have to look at the tech sheet and find the temperature and ohm reading chart. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in, but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Remove the wires and touch a probe to each terminal. Remember, based on your room temperature, the number can be off a little one way or another, but if it's completely off or you don't get a reading at all, you'll need to replace it. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next we need to inspect the drum felt seal. It's what keeps the hot air inside the drum. Depending upon your design, you could have one felt seal on the back of the drum and one on the front panel, or just one on the front panel or you could have two seals on the drum itself. Once you have the dryer taken apart, you can visually check the seals. If any of them are worn out or damaged, you'll need to replace them. Next is the cycling thermostat. It regulates the temperature inside the dryer by cycling the heat on and off. The cycling thermostats are usually rated in between 135 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This particular one is rated at 155 degrees. Usually when it fails, you won't get any heat but if you're getting longer drying times, it may not be cycling properly. It's unusual for it to fail this way, so you should still check out the other things first. It's usually located on the blower housing, but on some models, it can be located by the heat source. To test it, we need to remove it from the dryer. Once it's out, we're going to attach the multimeter probes to the terminals. It should have continuity. Then we're going to heat it up a little bit past its rated temperature and see if it breaks continuity to make sure it's working properly. You can use anything to heat it up. 
we're going to use a blow dryer and as it heats up we'll read the temperature with a thermometer. As you're heating it up you want to go slow so that the inside of the thermoset has time to come up to the correct temperature otherwise you might get a bad reading. You want to make sure that it doesn't break continuity before the rated temperature. Once you get past the rated temperature check the meter again to make sure that there's no longer continuity. If the thermostat loses continuity before the rated temperature, it'll need to be replaced. If your dryer has an auto dry feature, then the last thing we're going to check is the moisture sensor. The moisture sensor tells the dryer how wet the clothes are and adjusts the drying time as needed. If the clothes are taking too long to dry, it could be that the sensor isn't sending the proper signal to the dryer. It can be located on the back of the dryer on the bulkhead or in the front on the windscreen housing. In order for it to work, the sensor must be clean, the dryer must be level, and there has to be enough wet clothes inside the dryer so that they hit the sensor. Whether you have a control board or a timer, the first thing you should do is inspect the moisture sensor assembly. If either of the bars or the housing are damaged, you'll need to replace it. But if not, you might just have to clean them with some rubbing alcohol. If your dryer gave you an error code, you'll have to get the tech sheet and put it into diagnostic mode and follow the troubleshooting steps. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Dryers cause thousands of house fires every year. Most of these are caused by a buildup of lint. Lint and dust have a tendency to build up inside the dryer and vent and are the first things to ignite. Make sure your lint screen isn't missing or damaged or will let lint into the vent hose. Also make sure you clean it after every load. If you have the flexible style ducting, it's recommended that you upgrade to the rigid metal kind to prevent lint buildup and the duct from accidentally being crushed. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing new venting. Failing to clean the dryer is the number one cause of these fires. So make sure to clean the inside of the dryer, including the lint screen and blower housings, the ducting from the back of the dryer to the wall, and from the wall all the way to the outside of the house at least once a year. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the dryer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.